Hello everybody, my name is Matt and I'm with Scope Education and in this video we'll be talking about the basics of an ECG. I plan on making a full series of videos that delve into cardiology and electrophysiology but this will be the first installment of it so with that let's get into the lecture. <laughs> So what is an ECG? An ECG is a graphical representation of electrical activity in our heart, or as I call it, the squiggles on a piece of paper, which makes it seem super intelligent, right? We use electrodes to connect the ECG monitor to the patient, and these electrodes pick up electrical activity and cause a positive, negative, or no deflection on the ECG paper. The part that is baseline is called our isoelectric line. The heart is very unique in that it has automaticity, which in simple terms is it has the intrinsic ability to spontaneously depolarize itself. In a normal heart, there are a few pacemaker cells. The first one we're going to go into is the sinoatrial node or the SA node. On its own, without any sympathetic or parasympathetic factors, it can cause beats from around 60 to 80 beats per minute. This node is at the top of the right atrium and is where electrical activity originates. To depolarize the left atrium, there's a pathway that branches off of the SA node and heads past the septum to the left atrium. This is called the Bachmann's bundle. To further depolarize the right atrium, the electrical impulses head down the internodal pathways to the second pacemaker node, which is called our atrioventricular node, or AV node. This is the middle point between the atria and the ventricles. This is an important structure because it has a slight delay in it, which allows the atria to depolarize and dump blood into the ventricles more efficiently. The AV node also acts as a gatekeeper, so it will only allow a certain number of impulses down at a time, which is important in our patients with atrial fibrillation, where there are about 400 to 600 impulses a minute being produced in the atria. It helps cancel some of these out to prevent the heart from going into a deadly rhythm called ventricular fibrillation. From the AV node, the impulse goes into the bundle of his, which is in the septum. The impulse then goes down the bundle branches. There are two of them. You got the left bundle and you have the right bundle branch. The left bundle has two little fascicles that branch out from it the left anterior fascicle and left posterior fascicle. From there, the impulse heads down to the ventricles through the Purkinje fibers, and the Purkinje fibers cause the ventriculars to depolarize, which we'll get into a little bit later. This slide is important because it helps us understand how the cardiac cells depolarize using various ions, and knowing this helps us better understand why electrolyte disturbances can affect our 12 lead. The action potential starts off at roughly negative 90 millivolts, and it's separated into four different phases, as you can see. We start off at stage four because it is the end of the previous action potential. Phase four is noted at the bottom left, and it shows a resting potential of the cell. When a myocyte gets an action potential from an adjacent cell, there'll be a rush of positively charged ions into the cell. Sodium will rush in, and the calcium will slowly move into the cell. These positive charges cause a massive change in the positive to negative charges in the cell, and the cell becomes positive. This is shown as phase zero, which is depolarization of the cell. At phase one, the sodium channels close, which stops the positive ions from entering. Phase two is the plateau phase, and is shown by the horizontal line on the graph. Potassium, which is positively charged, exits the cell and calcium enters at a rate that keeps the charge relatively constant. At phase three, the calcium channels close and potassium dumps out of the cell and sodium slowly enters. This causes a shift to a more negative charge. Phase three shows re repolarization of the cell. Phase four is in effect now and everything goes back to normal and the cell is at the resting potential again. Now there's an interesting term we need to discuss here from phase zero to three. From phase zero to three, the cell enters a state of absolute refractory period, which means a second action potential cannot be initiated. When I went through school, vectors were not explained very well to me, and it honestly shortened my life expectancy significantly trying to learn it on my own. Basically, with electrodes, you're going to have negative and positive electrodes. If an impulse heads towards a positive lead, it will cause a positive deflection. If it heads away, there will be a negative deflection. And if the vector heads perpendicular to the electrodes, or if there's an extremely slow conduction, there will be no deflection from baseline. When the heart depolarizes, there will be a bunch of vectors. But if you combine all of them together to produce the average direction, you'll get something called our net vector. We've all heard of a 12 lead, right? Well, what is it? Like I said before, it's going to be a graphical representation of 12 different views or leads of the heart. There are three types of leads. You have a bipolar, which shows you one, two, and three on the 12 lead. 
This is our coronal view and shows off the view of the heart in more of a 2D way. The next set of leads are augmented unipolar leads, which will show you a coronal view of the heart and are shown as AVF, AVL, and AVR. The final set of leads are your bricorial leads or chest leads, which show the heart with a transverse view. The leads associated with this are V1 through V6. Here is your bipolar leads, which means that they have two charges to make a view. You can see the right arm has two negative charges, the left arm has a positive and negative, and the left leg has two positives. If you put your eye on a positive lead and look towards a negative lead, it will show you the view from that direction. So, for instance, if we put our eye on the left arm and look to the right arm, You'll get lead one, which shows you electrical activity from the left side of the heart. What about the other leads, such as two and three? Put your eye on the left leg and look towards a negative electrode on the left arm or right arm. You're looking at the heart from the bottom or inferior part. And as you can see, lead two and lead three both allow you to see the electrical activity coming from the bottom part of your heart now that we know about the bipolar vectors let's look at the augmented vectors which is your avr which means augmented vector right avl which means augmented vector left and avf augmented vector foot so to find augmented vectors we need to see that they are located on the corners of our triangle that we made up with our bipolar leads avr is going to be in the right corner avl is going to be on the left side of the triangle and avf is going to be in the bottom or closest to the foot. If we wanted to find the vector for AVR, we need to find the two electrodes that put it in the middle, which is going to be the left arm and left leg. Go right down the middle between them and put an arrow from the middle point on the line and go up into the upper right part of the triangle. That is your vector for AVR. It views the impulses or electrical activity from the upper right side of our heart. Now we can do the same thing with AVF and AVL as well. If we wanted to find AVL, we're going to use the left leg and the right arm to create our line and then find the, find the middle point and then look up to the left arm and that's going to give us our AVL. So you can see one and AVL look in a similar area and two, three and AVF all look in a similar area as well. To demonstrate that, to get AVF, we're going to go from the right arm and left arm, find the middle point, go down and straight on down is AVF. So as I said, two, three AVF have a very similar viewpoint on the bottom part of the heart. Same with one in AVL. Now we're going to go into our precordial leads, which is going to be V1 through V6. As you can see, these leads show a transverse view of the heart. Placement is very important for all your leads, but especially these ones. I want to preface this. If you start putting V1 and V2 in wonky areas, it, can, it might show some ST elevation or Brugada sign that might not even be there just because you just put them in the wrong area. So V1 is going to be in the fourth intercostal on the right side of the sternum. V2 is going to be the fourth intercostal left side of the sternum. We're going to skip V3 real quick and we're going to put V4 midclavicular in the fifth intercostal space, usually underneath the nipple. And between V4 and V2, we're going to put V3. For V5, it's going to be the fifth intercostal space anterior axillary line, and V6 is our fifth intercostal space mid-axillary. Here you can see how all the leads are combined to show various parts of the heart. The lateral leads are 1 AVL, V5, and V6, which we can see the lateral side of the heart. 2, 3 AVS show the inferior part of the heart. AVR sees the base of the heart near the top of the right atrium. V1, V2 show the septum, and V3, V4 show the anterior wall of the heart. Now that we fully understand vectors and our electrodes and what they look at, we need to determine the overall axis of depolarization, which is our cardiac axis. I won't lie, this topic is a bit difficult, but I have some tips. You must remember that if an impulse heads towards a lead, there will be a positive deflection. If it travels away from it, it will cause a negative deflection. You also have to remember the normal conduction pathway through the heart as well, because this can be very important. It starts off at the SA node and heads at a downward diagonal path towards the ventricles. A normal axis between 90 and negative 30 degrees. We want that impulse to be heading towards the AV node. So to find cardiac axis, we only really care about two leads. It's going to be, I'm going to do the simple, easy way to make this easier to understand. We're only going to care about lead one and AVF. Using these two allows us to determine the axis more accurately. As you can see, if lead one is positive, you'll get blue color. If AVF is positive, the vector will be heading straight down. When we combine the two, you will see that the overlap is. It'll be from zero degrees to about positive 90. You can obviously use the QRS deflection in lead two to see if the axis is within negative 30 to 
90 degrees. But like I said, I'm just gonna go a really simple, down and dirty, easy way for you to remember this. All right, guys, this is my favorite way of understanding axes. It's a super easy way, and it's called the thumb method. We are only going to care about leads one and AVF as discussed before. We will be broadly looking at normal left axis deviation, right axis deviation, and extreme axis deviation. Your left thumb will be for lead one, and your right thumb will be for AVF. If the QRS is mostly positive, you put that thumb up, and if the QRS is mostly negative, you put that thumb down. For normal axis, lead one is positive, so put your left thumb up, and AVF is also positive, so put your right thumb up. Two thumbs up, your axis is good. For left axis deviation, lead one is positive, so put your left thumb up. AVF is negative, so put your right thumb down. Your thumbs have left each other, so left axis deviation. For right axis deviation, look at lead one, which is gonna be negative, so put your left thumb down. AVF is positive, so put your right thumb up. Thumbs are heading right towards each other, so right axis deviation. For extreme axis deviation, lead one is down and AVF is down. Your patient's going down, 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 having a really bad day. See, that's my simple, easy way for you guys to remember this. You might look like an absolute moron on scene with your thumbs going up and down, but guess what, who cares? As long as you understand it, that's all that matters at the end of the day. Now we're gonna do a little skills test. So let's look over here at lead one. Lead one is QRS is down, so we got our left thumb down. AVF is going up. Our thumbs are heading right towards each other. So right axis deviation. And what about this one? Let's look at one and AVF. Both of them are up, guess what? That's a normal cardiac axis. Congratulations, you passed that test. Now that's all folks. I hope you guys enjoyed listening to this lecture. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, subscribe, or don't. This isn't dictatorship. I'm not your mother. You don't have to do what I say. Once again, my name is Matt. I hope you guys have a wonderful day. And let me know if you want more videos about this in the future.